Okay, so let's see where we're at. So we wrote the paddle class and the ball class. So ball dot vy equals negative five. That should have worked. Okay, I'm not sure. It looks a little glitchy to me. I might have to be fixing this later, but let's just move on. Um, let's run it one more time. Okay, so our ball dot our ball and our paddle are moving around. Now we're gonna have to make the blocks. So I probably could have started with this since this is going to be the hardest part. But maybe I've hooked you into the tutorial series and you're going to watch the whole thing now. So anyways, so how are we going to make these blocks? Um, so what we're actually going to do is we're just going to build a series of rectangles, okay? And let's just start by building one row, okay? We're actually going to end up making a two-dimensional row. So we'll have a row this way and then columns so basically it's going to be a two-dimensional array is what I meant to say I don't know why I said that so let's just start by making a block class okay so new tab we'll call it block okay and what I'm gonna do is have you write the um, method to make a series of rectangles across the width of your screen so you can decide how many you want to do um, just start see if you can do it so build it so that you have a row of blocks across the center okay and they should be individual blocks so basically if you're gonna have eight blocks each of those should be a block in an array okay so you should have a, an array of eight blocks okay so let me show you how I would do that so I'll do public class block no method it's a class so let's do what do we need to have for a block so we need to have a X O Y we need to have a width and a height okay we also need to have a a boolean oh boolean um, status we'll call it status oh I forgot to put float these are all floats private floats the positions and the width and the height and the status okay so let's go ahead and make our constructor Okay, so for the for the block, well, let me just start by making one constructor where it just makes a block. So we'll say x equals um, width divided by, uh, we'll just start with x equals 0, 0, y equals 0, 0, y equals 0. And we'll do width equals, um, so that we want the width of the, we want to fill the screen. So we'll do divided by the number of blocks. <laughs> and we'll say h is equal to 20. We'll make them 20 pixels tall. OK. Now we, haven't, we don't have an n. So let's do, um, so we'll say n is the, we'll call it num blocks because it's, I've already got, now that I have too many variables, I'm going to start using bigger names because x and y are obvious obvious and usually w and h are pretty obvious but now that I'm already got more variables so I'll say num blocks okay let's just try that and then we'll do public void so let's just show the block so I'm I'm not trying to think too much or do too much I'm just trying to get something that works first oh my gosh I should just start this over <laughs> okay let's just see if this works and status doesn't matter for now so let's make a block and see if it works block block and we'll make a new block so we'll kind of go through all of this the same block equals new block you might not think this is going to be harder, but it's going to be harder. <laughs> In other words, you'd be wrong. I mean, not really, I guess, if you're like good at it. Okay, so there's our block that's up there. That's cool. So the one thing I will say is that it worked, but now I want to have eight of them. Okay, so let's don't even worry about the ball for now, but we have we want to have eight of those across. So instead of just having, so I already know, like from just, I've done it before, but I've also just thinking about this, you wanna make sure you know. So like, let's think of like Excel. Um, actually, you know what? 
let's take a quick tour of uh, like Google Sheets just so you can see what I'm talking about so if you look at a spreadsheet and you think about like a spreadsheet is basically like kind of what we're doing so let me zoom in a little bit here other way there so basically you see how each of these has an A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so that way I know A1. If I said, where is C5, you would be able to go to C5, and you would know that index. So you have to keep track of both the rows and the columns. So first of all, I already know that I want to keep track of which row it's in, right? I also want to be able to keep track of which column it is in. I think I reverse that. These are actually, I think, the rows and these are the columns. But either way, it doesn't really matter. You're going to have to keep track of two dimensions. Okay, so what that actually means for us is that in our program, we're going to want to not just have a, a, a generic block. So let's copy this constructor. So I'm going to just, instead of deleting that or overriding it, I'll just have another constructor that takes some parameters. So what parameters might we want to do? Well, we're gonna call we're gonna do float uh, or int I guess int row int column. Okay, so we're gonna have to tell it what row and what column it's in. So that way, when it displays it, it takes into account which row it's in. Okay, does that make sense? I hope. <laughs> um, and so. And let's all let's just leave it for that for now. So this is basically going to be a little bit harder than just giving it x equals zero and y equals zero. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to delete the x and the y for now. And you know what I'm actually going to do? I'm also going to do an int for num blocks. And I'm going to say num blocks equals num blocks. So you can actually do that, but just to be clear, I'll say the num block. So actually, you don't have to change the names of these, but I've already gotten burned on my last tutorial for using the same name for a method as I did for a variable, and that's not okay in other languages like JavaScript. So in like in C and in Java, you can do that because methods and and variables are different, but some languages you can't do that so and it's not a good practice so I'll just use the num blocks so that it's clear that this parameter is being assigned to the variable which is a field of the class block okay so anyways there they are this one is the one that is going to be permanent to the block okay so we'll say width is equal to the width of the screen divided by how many blocks there are and we'll say um, x is going to equal um, the width times the row. So we're going to start by letting the row be 0, so it'll start there at 0, but then the next one will be exactly the width of the block over. So if I said the next one is 1, the next one is 2, the next one is 3, and we'll let y equal um, the height times um, the column. So that means I need to write this line ahead of that. So let's first tell the computer or the block how wide and how um, tall it is. And then what we'll do is we'll tell it to be um, exactly where to be, x and y. So actually, that means we don't have to change this part. So let's just go to our main program. So I'll give you a second to kind of figure, like, look at this. And um, this is. This is going to work. I'm not sure if this is the way I should have done it, but I, I this makes sense to me, so hopefully it makes sense to you. So the width is just the width of the screen divided by how many blocks we have. That way we're assured to fill up the screen exactly. And then the height is just 20. We could make that a variable. But our x position is going to be the width of each block times what index it is. So again, going back to Google Sheets, so this would be 0, 0 right here at the top left corner the width of the block will be here. So the second index will have a value of one. So one times the width will put it right there. Notice the Y hasn't changed. Okay. Okay, so let's see if we can do that. So let's go to the class here. So let's just start by doing a um, one dimensional array. So we'll say block, block, and we'll say 
um, block equals new block array. So we're going to change this to an array. Let's just do um, eight. Okay. And now what I'll do is for int i equals zero, i is less than block dot length i plus plus. So we're going to go through and we're going to populate all of the block array with blocks. But we're not going to just make them random blocks. So let's do block um, block i equals new block and we'll call it uh, what uh, Um, hold on a second. It's going to be a new block. Uh, let's go back to the row, column, num blocks. Yeah, what did I just do? So the row is going to be zero, right? Is that right? Is it row? Is the X position? Ah. I want this to be times column, this times row. So the X is going to move with the columns, and the Y will move with the rows. So that's actually important. So we'll say 0, because we're going to be in the first row. And we'll say I for the column. okay, And then we'll give it the num blocks is um, 8. That's how many blocks there is. Because that's how much we decided, right? when we did this number. So actually I'm going to use block.length again because that's the, um, the, the value. Alright, and so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to also copy this for loop and put that into the display because we cannot just display block now because block is an array so we have to go through each block and tell each of those blocks to display. This is gonna work. <laughs> it does. Oh, it actually worked. Okay, so one thing I want to do is block, 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 block. Um, let's before we do this display, let's fill this with red. Wait, not not red. Let's do. Um, oh, let's get fancy. Let's make RGB, and we're gonna make some private ints. So we're going to give it some color here and we'll make um, R equal um, 255, G equal 255, um, B equal 0. Okay, so we'll actually be able to change this later, but now I've got blocks. Okay, so that worked. Okay, so we've got a row of blocks. And what's cool about this is that I can actually change this number right here and make it six and there'll be six blocks across the screen and so also if you change the width of your screen so you're like you know what I want to make it um, a wide screen maybe not so tall kind of like the one in the original so so it's kind of like that so you can totally change your code so even though I'm not the best at explaining everything at least I've written pretty good code it's like flexible enough so it's not just like Except for it seems like it's bouncing a little early, but I'm going to fix that later. But now what we want to do is we want to make a, a, a two-dimensional array. So we want to now, instead of just doing one-dimension array, I want to go down two dimensions array. So I don't know if you know how to do that or not. My students are just learning this, so I'm going to go a little... I did. I wanted to do the one-dimensional array first, and then now do the two-dimensional array. So it's, it's like this is the rows, and this is the columns, okay? So that's why I had to change that variable from rows to columns. So what you're going to do is instead of here, let's create another variable called j, okay? And we're going to put another loop in here. So for int j equals zero, j less than um, block i dot length. So we have to. I, I skipped a step, so I need to go back and do that, but I already know how to fix it, so um, I'll just continue on for that part. Okay, so we're doing an, 
a j equals zero, and this is going to be the length of the um, array in the i. So we're going to have to make this a two-dimensional array. So let's make it six. I'm sorry. Let's do three by six. So let's shift that over so that it's still going to be six across, but across. But the first will be three. So it'll go three rows down and six columns across. So this will be. So since they're all the same, I could have just done block one. I could have. I could change this to zero, and say the first, however long the first. It doesn't really matter. They're all the same length. So it's going to do this loop. Remember, this loop is inside of this loop. So it's going to do this loop all as many times as it goes through. So this is going to be a lot of loops, but it will go very fast because our what did I just do? That was weird. It's going to go very fast because Java is pretty fast. Block. Uh, that, that should have worked. New block, J, I, block dot length. Breakout does not match breakout block. New block. Huh. I'm confused why this is wrong. It's going to go. Oh. Yay. So I have to make sure I give it. So it was like telling me the answer. I'm, I need to drink my coffee. So hopefully this is slow enough for at least you guys to figure it out. Also, I'm talking to my students. I'm, the other people are probably... I don't know what other people there are anyways, but my students are probably, they're, they're not, they're about the same smartness as me and level, so I don't think that they're like completely going to be smooth through this either. So um, let's just see. So we have to do the same thing here. So let's just see if this works. I, th I think this is actually going to work because um, that's the whole purpose I'm having my students do this is because it actually requires them to be able to use two-dimensional arrays, which is on the AP test like crazy. So... And that's kind of what we're aiming after, although I'm not. I'm not actually taking the test. But let's see if that works. Yay! So that's actually really cool. So what's cool about that is that it made, let's see, it went one, two, three, four, five. So I actually had them backwards somehow. So it's, as hard as I tried, I got this backwards. So let's make it six by three. I guess it doesn't really matter how it works as long as you know which number controls what. But, um,. I'm pretty sure that went in the right way. I think I just had it backwards for some reason. So I think that looks pretty good for now. So I think we'll leave it at that. Uh, that was pretty a pretty long tutorial. What's going on with my thing? Is it glitching? I'm going to fix that now. Okay, so yeah, it's bouncing too early. So let's go to the ball where it checks the paddle. And it's the Y minus D. Let's do D over 2. Okay, so that way it doesn't. Okay, that looks better to me. It's got to at least hit the paddle. All right. So, hope you enjoyed that. Sorry it was too long. I'm going to take a break myself. I just actually busted out those three in a row. Um, but I'm going to take a break, and then I'll finish up the rest. We'll talk about the collisions now. So, we'll go in and now make these blocks start to explode. So, hope you enjoyed the video, and see you in the, the next one.